Welcome to First Thursdays with Kennett Library. I'm Brad Piper, co-chair of the New Building Committee. And beside me is John Sheenis. Uh, John Sheenis, project manager with uh, EDIS Company. We're the uh, construction managers of uh, the New Kennett Library. So right now we are standing in the, uh, the vestibule for the new space. Um, right in front of us will be the new sliding glass doors that get you into the space. Um, and then as we kind of continue onward, we will uh, we'll enter the uh, new library. Yeah, the, uh, the entryway here will take us away from the busyness of State Street. It's a glass enclosed area with light filled. And as you come in, the first thing you're going to see is the entryway to our auditorium. So let's go take a look. Welcome to the new auditorium slash lecture hall. Um, this will be a hundred plus seat area um, for multiple um, events. Uh, over here, you will you'll see all the tiers. They don't have the seats on them yet, uh, but these are three tiers. Seats all the way across where we're standing right now will also have seating. Um, down on the first, on that lower level, which is about, we call 10 feet below the street level. There is storage access behind there, and as well as um, an ADA accessible elevator. So for any folks who can't make it down there, there will be a way for them to get down to the first floor. This is going to be an exciting asset for the Kennett Library. I think everybody can imagine the, the lower stage, as John said, with the steeply great seats. Everyone's going to have a perfect view of what's happening. What's going to happen? We're going to have TED Talks, we're going to have lectures and presentations, there can be recitals, uh, musicals, uh, debates, anything that, and everything that the community can imagine. So we're, we're just so uh, happy to be able to support these type of events uh, for Kennett in the future. So right now we are standing in what's called the Buyer Tailor Room. It is a feature room for the library. There will be wood paneling and wood cabinets all throughout, along with a fireplace right behind me, which is what you see in this bump out. Um, the walls, as you see, are kind of bare right now. You'll see that throughout the extent of the project. Um, we're currently getting in all of our electricals, our mechanical trades. Um, and then over here you'll see um, Holly, this is not a uh, this is not the permanent feature, but you'll see this throughout uh, the video, the, throughout the tour, um, as we're using it to kind of temporarily close the building to keep our construction moving on the inside as we wait for our glass. So as John said, you need to use your imagination a little bit, but that is going to be a beautiful uh, glass curtain wall. It's a perfect view, uh, eastern view. Uh, so there will be natural light cascading into the space, and again, with a beautiful bookcase, there will be a flat panel display, there will be tables, easy chairs for people to uh, read and, and, and just kind of take in a little bit of quiet and solitude in front of the, uh, the, the fireplace. So a great space uh, in this new library. So right now we are standing in the audio-visual room. Uh, this is a, you'll see the double studs throughout, um, that is to limit sound and vibration and kind of make this a room in a room almost. So um, used for recordings and whatnot that the community come in and utilize um, whatever they would like. As John said, this, this is going to be another special space. We're looking out through the viewing window, so all the patrons as they come into the library will have a, a, a view of what's happening in here. It may be a, a live radio cast, podcast, people uh, working with their relatives to get personal histories. It may be uh, uh, music demos and, and recording tracks, so just a variety of, of AV uh, applications. Uh, we're right now in, in the process of specking out all the equipment that will fill this space, so again, it, it's going to be a unique addition uh, to this library. Okay, we've moved now to towards the rear entrance of the library, but what you'll see behind me is the ALP office. Uh, there's the cl ALP classroom, and then also a study space, a meeting room. But let's, let's go into the ALP classroom uh, to uh, look at that space a little closer. So 
So as Brad mentioned, uh, this is the ALP classroom. It's a very large room. Uh, behind me is the storage room that is connected to the ALP classroom. So anything that's in here, you know, they can kind of have a lot of flex with this space in general. Obviously, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of, you see all the rough framing behind us, some blocking for a TV um, and other cabinetry throughout, um, and just kind of the general rough you know, what, what's behind the walls. And you'll kind of, as I mentioned, you'll kind of see that as we kind of proceed through the tour. As John said, th this is an ALP classroom. There's actually three other spaces in the library that can be used as uh, parallel classrooms as well. What you see behind us, all the metal and, and the data and electrical outlets, that's going to be a flat panel display. And so the instructor will be at the front of the room, there'll be 30 students or so uh, in the classroom. And this will be equipped with cameras and recording devices. So with a flip of a switch, basically we can record this on Zoom. So not only the students that are able to make it here to the library, but any of the students from home will be able to uh, dial in as well. Um, all, the inf all the classes will be recorded, will be archived. So again, we're gonna be creating a library that uh, the Kenneth uh, patrons can access over time. So we're back into the adult stats area. Uh, to my left here, kind of this room right here, this is a uh, meeting room. It is a kind of a, just a room for people to rent out um, and just meet, you know, go over, you know, maybe do homework, whatever it may be. Um, there will be a monitor in the room along with a uh, floor box and a table there. Uh, so just a nice size room. This, this whole front here will be glass. Um, so just again, nice size room. Behind me, um, at, this is the southern entrance to the building. This will be an ADA accessible entry. Um, it will have a ramp down to the parking lot, about 19 spaces um, for people to come, you know, come from all over. Um, you don't have to rent a space, and you don't have to pay to rent, pay to park now. Um, and then behind there you'll see um, we have two retaining walls, one in at more so than uh, your traditional flat wall. And then the wall against this, this side will have a nice mural. Absolutely right. The, the mural is, uh, if you recall, uh, we've made a pledge to the community to replace the underground railroad mural that had existed on the site. And we're looking and we're going to be working with the public not only to display that piece of Kennet history, but other pieces of history as well. Now, people are going to have to wait a bit for that because as we pour that retaining wall, the process is it actually needs to cure for a full year before we can actually have the artist apply the mural. But uh, that, that will be coming. That will be coming. So again, this is our, our rear entryway. Um, and uh, as John said, it's ADA accessible, as is obviously the full library from the front entrance to the back entrance to the stage floor to, to the second floor. Every bit of space within this library is ADA is accessible. And speaking of, here we are. let's go up to the second floor. So we're standing here on the second floor by our open stairway. This is the stairway that our patrons will be using to uh, get to the second floor. And as they come up through, that column will be hidden by our tree of knowledge. Behind me is the adult maker space. And I'll let uh, John talk a little more about the construction aspects. Yes, yeah, so similar to kind of what you see throughout this opening that you see right here, cool glass behind that, cool glass or so tunnel of light to get into this space. Um, and then in the space, just countertops and kind of places for community to you know use the space, um, hence the term maker space. Yeah, the, the type of things that uh, we'll be incorporating are large format scanners, printers, embroidery machines, sewing machines, electronic uh, gizmos. Uh, and when you think of STEAM and, and STEM, those type of educational processes, not only for teenagers and adults, uh, but also you'll, you'll hear in a moment that we'll be making, having the same offering, types of offering in our children's maker space. So again, a very practical, very educational oriented uh, uh, space for the community. So behind us is the artisan residence room. Um, similar to before, 
the wall is fully enclosed with glass. You know, right now we're basically standing right in front of all the full glass door to come into the space. I'll let Brad kind of elaborate more on what the room is using. Yeah, again, an artist in residence, uh, this, this room has three walls that are fully glass, so it gets complete natural light. And again, uh, there, as, as we work with the local community and our artists, uh, we're, we've got some exciting ideas of, of how they can use and access that space uh, and then allow their, their work, if you will, to, to be shared with the rest of the community. So we're, we're really excited about this initiative. So again, we're here at the top of the uh, central stairway. Behind me are the four, what we call the Tudor rooms. So these are spaces originally are uh, mainly designed to help facilitate our ALP, Adult Literacy Program, and tutors so that they can do their one-on-one -on -one work with students. Uh, but these are actually, each room will have a table, a flat panel display. It will accommodate up to four people. So it will be great for tutoring. It would be also great for individual study rooms and small group uh, meeting areas. Uh, all the meeting spaces that we have throughout the library will be equipped with flat panel displays. So as people work from their tablets, from their phones, from their laptops, they'll be able to cast what's on their screen to the flat panel display in the room to help facilitate the meeting uh, process. So again, uh, again, we want to try to make the areas as friendly and productive for all of our patrons as possible. So again, we've moved on from the tutor rooms now, and adjacent to that, you'll find the young adults section. And again, there's a lot of fun, colorful furnishings uh, in this space, both in this curved area behind me, as well as what you see to my right. So this will be uh, primarily intended for the young adults. They will have their own kind of meeting room uh, session area, which is right behind us. Well, let's move into the space. And uh, actually, this is a wall of windows, and, and behind us is one of the great features of this library, the, the terrace. And I'll let John talk a little bit about the, uh, the terrace. Yes, yeah, so as Brad mentioned, um, this is a full glass opening right here. Uh, so be fully, you'll be able to see the outside. What's cool about this is when you walk out to there, which you will have access to my left, to the areas to the left, to the right, um, you'll be walking out right onto a stone patio, um, or terrace level, I should say. Um, out here, there will be tables, chairs, places for people just to hang out as need be. Um, and then the railing, uh, there will be a railing all along the outside here. That railing will have lights attached to it, which is a cool little feature. At night, the lights can come on. If there are events, the lights will be on. It's just a way to kind of really make the space a, a nice space just to be around um, as, you know, the, the day turns from day to night. And, and John's absolutely right. During the day, we hope people go out during the good weather to uh, sit in a chair, read their book, uh, over the lunchtime hour, enjoy their lunch, and it's going to be a perfect setting for special events, be it fundraisers uh, or other gatherings. We will have an audio installation uh, over the terrace, so again, uh, be it background music or reviews and presentations that, that can be held in, in that space. So right now we're standing in doorway of one of the multi-purpose rooms. Um, as you'll see behind me, I say room because right here, you'll see there, this will be a movable wall where to go from one room to two rooms, both rooms will have the same functionalities, they'll, have, they'll be exactly near each other so that if there is a large gathering, they can open up the wall and kind of have two large rooms um, that are exactly similar. So uh, if, as we go in here, as John said, the, uh, the moving partition, if you will, gives us great flexibility. So we talked about the additional classroom space. With the partition closed, we've got two more rooms, two more classrooms. Again, the rooms are equipped with flat panel displays. Uh, and so again, for both the instructor and, and the students, uh, it'll be a flexible space for, uh, to, to meet their needs. So right now we're standing in the children's maker space. Um, colorful space for children to come, you know, create stuff, make stuff, do what children love to do, um, and that's have fun. 
So behind me, you'll see this is a huge box window. Um, we'll have a seating area for kids to kind of climb on and to sit on, maybe hang out with their friends, whatever it may be. Just a nice, large space for them to hang out. So, so as John said, this is going to be a fun space for the kids. It's all about STEM and STEAM. Actually, the camera is viewing through what is a large uh, open window area. We're hoping that uh, adults and parents can watch their kids as they're in here with computers and, and Legos and, and a little electronic stuff, anything that uh, can help uh, from a STEAM and, and STEM point of view. So we'll have computers for them, and uh, there's going to be a lot of little spaces, public spaces, uh, where uh, they uh, can have multiple activities happening at the same time. The space back behind me here is actually the prep room. So our, our children's library of John will be able to uh, do his prepping and get the things ready for the different programs that uh, will be an important part of this space. Right now we are standing in the open children's space. It will be a place for families to come with their children, hang out, read books, whatever it may be uh, that they want to do on any time of day. Behind, uh, or right over here, is uh, some cubbies for the kids to come to. It will be very colorful, you know, green surround, a wood platform. For kids just hang out and kind of explore, um, climb around. Um, and then all throughout here will just be nice furniture for the kids to be in. Um, and one thing we haven't hit on as we kind of kind of have given you the tour is what's the what's it going to look like? What's the you know seeing kind of the rough outline? Well, what's it going to look like? Finish. Be tons of nice color in here. The carpet's going to be a color. You know, all around will be you know different types of ceilings. There'll be a nice cloud shaped ceiling here that will actually be blue ceiling tiles. Um, all throughout kind of the perimeter will be a wood ceiling. Columns over here, um, kind of each floor will be, they'll look like trees, you know, with, you know, ceiling tiles that are painted green and kind of have a nice kind of woven texture to it that almost, you know, looks like, you know, broken down wheat to kind of give that appearance of, you know, a tree. So all in all, you know, the design of this is, you know, very much intended for kids um, and let their minds explore and wander. So, so John's got it right. What, what we told our architect is we wanted the children's space to be fun. And that, together with the interior design, have, have hit, it, hit the nail on the head. So again, we'll have what looks like an open uh, space, open sky, open clouds, trees throughout. Where we're standing right now will actually be like a little, uh, I'll call it uh, foam seating area, which will be part of story time. What I'm look, doing is looking out the south facade, which is a curtain wall of windows that uh, will be, again, the space where the story time will be held. Behind me, you see all the open space. Again, that, those are glass curtain walls that will allow natural, uh, natural uh, uh, light to cascade in. And also in that space will be our children's circulation desk. So a very large space that we've devoted uh, for our children. So right now we are standing in the adult stacks area. This is an area where there will be bookshelves, seating, you know, your general place to sit down, hang out, read a book. Um, all along this wall here, kind of as we can emphasize it throughout, you know, huge glass wall with a ton of natural lighting. Um, the feature stair with the tree of behind it. And then beyond that, there's, there's two large walls. They'll actually have Avondale Brownstone, which is, you know, the library took a lot of focus on making sure they included stone from the area in this project. And that actually was the basis behind all the exterior design. Um, and that's kind of what the focal point is um, on the exterior of the building. The, the space where John and I are standing right now will actually be part of the stacks, the book area, shelving area, if you will. Uh, we've designed the shelving to be only four feet high. Uh, that's intentional because we want to maintain these open sight lines so that from the front of the building to the back of the building, again, there's a clear open sight lines. All along, any of the glass curtain walls will be comfortable seating. And again, we, we just uh, hope uh, our community uh, patrons come in, sit down, and uh, enjoy themselves with, with all the natural light and views. Just uh, enjoy the outdoors, outdoor views that we have.